What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today I've got a discussion video that I've kind of been thinking about for a while now and uh, it's pretty much on the basis of marine cess as an archetype and why I actually think that they, they do have a good future. I know they haven't really shown up pretty much at all in the competitive scene um, and I think there are some very blatant reasons for that, mainly being that they just can't find their own disruption very well and they just don't have a ton of utility. Um, but I think there is like a very clear, simple path for that to be fixed with future support. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today is, is like why, because of how the archetype is set up, it could be so easy for Konami to just make a couple cards and this archetype could immediately shoot up to like essentially being the kind of deck that Salamangrates are. So. That's pretty much what we're going to be looking at today. Um, I don't know. The reason why I think this would happen, first off, is uh, just for the fact that, like, one, this is played by one of the most popular characters in Link Brains, uh, and, like, I guess, I mean, I didn't watch Link Brains, but I believe it's, like, what, what who a lot of people consider to be, like, the best girl from Link Brains, most popular girl, most, uh, I don't know, relevant girl in all of Link Brains, I guess. It's a cute girl archetype. It's water. Uh, a lot of people, like, those things in conjunction um and yeah so i think like there's a lot of reason for Konami to go back to it. i mean we just got um the legendary duelist that supported all female duelists we could get like a second round of that and she could be thrown in once we're into like the net further into like the next series of Yu-Gi-Oh, so that it isn't the current series anymore that could work whatever that's not really the point here i'm just saying why i think this could be a, a thing that happens sooner rather than later anyway um, going to why I think this deck has like such a good future, okay? There's a couple of things, particularly looking at some of the cards. Before we get into like what cards, like I think, like set the archetype up in such a good way, um, in terms of like the future, like card design and stuff like that, I just want to talk about what I'm expecting, like what the clearest path is. The clearest path is. At one to two traps, preferably two new traps that actually do something. I know we have Wave, and Wave is great. I actually think Wave is actually a really good card, uh, but literally none of the other traps do anything. They're so bad. So bad. Okay? We need more disruption. The deck just doesn't get to its own disruption because it doesn't search for things. But if you just if we're able to just play more copies of things, that is another way to make it work. It won't be the best thing in the world, you know, without legit searching, but at least if you're seeing those things, uh, the deck can just rotate resources insanely well. So that's like what, what you want to take advantage of there. So that's what I'm expecting there. And also one to two spells. They could be anything. Honestly, if these spells are just good in any way, I'll take it. Um, because we just have a free spell search that we'll get to in a little bit. Um, and then I guess maybe one extra deck monster that actually is more offensive. So many of the cards, all of the, all of the like in archetype, uh, link monsters they they're great for resource management but they don't really do anything to be like offensive and like go after your opponent remove their resources do anything that deck doesn't really have any removal and that's one of the biggest downfalls of it so without further ado let's get into some of these cards that i think set the stack up immensely stack has a rota <laughs> like the first card is like so simple this deck has its own rota uh, as all cyrus decks do and oh, i know what you're saying john this, this this discards like it's not actually rota yeah but this this archetype is so resource efficient and all of its like so many cards in its in its archetype just like kind of come back from the graveyard for free that like the discard is so unconsequential it really is so um sign of mining i mean it, it's great <laughs> i mean the deck has one card combo so sign of mining is amazing Next up, okay, we're going to get into the real Marine Cess cards. First up is Blue Tang. This is a really, really good card, um, just in general. First things first, on summon, it dumps any Marine Cess monster. They already have some that have Synergy in the graveyard, so that's already a great setup there. Secondly, the more important thing is when it's used as Link Material for a water monster, it lets you pretty much do like a Foxy effect or an Area Zero effect, where you get to look at the top three cards of your deck by excavating them, and then if there's any Marine Cess cards, you can pick one and add it to your hand. Now the reason this is so important is like I said before, this deck doesn't search, but it has other ways of like semi-searching, right? So we only have one legit trap in the deck that actually is like in archetype disruption. If we had one or even two other traps that were actually decent and they were like worth playing at three, this card's chances of actually hitting an in archetype disruption skyrocket, absolutely skyrocket. I believe with like three, most of the time you're at like I don't know, like a one in three chance of hitting wave, if that, and like, that's not great. Like, we need way better chances than that. So like, imagine if that number was nine cards in the deck instead of three. 
right? Like that goes through the roof. Same thing if we got good spells. Like it's not just those three, but you can tack on any of these good spells that you'd be like wanting to be hitting as well. So I think that would be great. I think this is one of the main cards that like would, would support like any card that gets added to the archetype because it adds anything if you can excavate it. So that's pretty good. Next up is Marine says Pascalis. So I guess she works with any monster. I don't think the deck needs like main deck monsters, if anything, just extra deck monsters. But because uh, on summon, she can like special um, a Marine says from hand. So cool, helps you dump your hand. The main thing though is in, when she's in the graveyard, except the turn she was sent there, she can banish herself to target a Marine says spell or trap in grave and add it back to your hand. And this is one of those things that's just like, this is the kind of recursion that this deck can have. It's just like, oh, you wave them? Great, we'll just get waved back and we'll just wave them again. Like, we'll just set up another wave. Like, it's one of those things like how, like, Salamangrates can just, like, continually just feel like every turn once you get into that grind with them, they're just like, oh, set a rage, pop your stuff. Ooh, set a rage next turn, pop your stuff. And you can never really get back in the game. This deck could potentially do similar things with stuff like Pascalis and the Link 3 that we'll get to. So I just think the, the ability to do that. And plus, they also do have a Link 4 that can special summon Banish monsters. So, like, that's fine. It's not a great Link 4, but... It could be something that they play to get her back and like recycle her so it's kind of cool next up is another big one and the reason that i even have spells in this is if this card is linked summon you can add a marine spell from your nectar hand unfortunately as busted as this effect sounds for just a generic like not a generic but a link one and an archetype the archetype has one spell and it's a field spell that's as good actually not even as good as salamangrate sanctuary and so you're just left there like, okay, <laughs> why? <laughs> what is the point of this card if you're not going to make more spells? Now, I think that's exactly what Konami wants us to think because I think they plan on making more spells. Now, they don't have to be amazing. I think if they are amazing, then this card becomes absolutely obscenely busted. But if they're decent, I mean, it could be as simple as just more removal. Like I said, this deck has no removal. If they give us a normal spell that says, if you control a, a marine says monster, target one card your opponent controls and destroy. Slow, targeting, destruction, removal, not the greatest, but you know what? The deck doesn't have removal. So like, if it's free, as so free as like this card makes it by like just, uh, just a link one that's gonna be part of your simplest combos anyway, like, yeah, I'd play it. I would play it because the deck needs the removal. It's like free cards. I'd like, what are you, are you gonna not gonna play that? Like, I don't think so. So like, like I said, like we don't need the most busted cards off of the spells, but we just need something, like something to get more value off of this than just the field spell. Cause man, the towers play is like so weak. It has so many flaws to it. So many decks can add it unless you can back it up with like two to three disruptions. Uh, and, and that's just unreliable in this deck. So I would love for there to just be more options. That's why I really think spells need to be in this deck's future uh, as far as support goes, just to, for this card to allow you to abuse. And then stuff like Pascalis, getting those cards back for free and just recycling them, that's also another really good part of it. So Sea Angel, really, really important here. And the last card we're going to look at today is Marine Cess Marbled Rock. Now she is just pretty plain and simple. The main thing here... Uh, she is generic, actually. She takes any waters. Pretty cool. But the main thing here is that once per turn, you can target one Marine Cess card in your graveyard, except for herself, and add it to your hand. Monsters, set yourself up for the next play. Spells, like I just talked about, no matter what spell it is, as long as it's respectable in any way, like, this card just gets it back for free every single turn. Or a trap. You disrupt your opponent, and then to set yourself up for their turn, their next turn or whatever, you're just going to add another trap back to hand, and just it's going to feel like uh, like Sunlight Wolf continually getting back the traps, and your opponent's just never able to like work grind their way through it, and it's just going to feel like the same thing. So, I really think this deck has the potential to just be like Salamangrates, but unfortunately, they just don't have the cards. We have one trap. Whereas some like, like Salamangrates have two, and they have much easier access for getting as getting access to them. Stuff like Gazelle, mainly Gazelle, just dumping them, and then Sunlight Wolf getting them back. This deck doesn't have as good a way of dumping them. It kind of makes me wish that um, what is it, Blue Tang actually dumped any Marine Cess card because you could like dump a trap and then make the Link Three and add the trap back to hand, which would actually be pretty spicy. But maybe that work. Maybe that would work a little bit too similarly to Salamangrates. So I understand that. Uh, but yeah, I think it like, in my perfect world, two good traps, one that does removal. Like one, it could be as simple as like, if you control a this monster, target a monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Like, okay, as long as it's a quick effect and it removes, I'm into it. 
okay? That's all I care about there. Ideally, I could have a second one as well, just so for numbers sake, and we could play more of them so that uh, blue tank can hit them more easily, stuff like that. That would be cool as well. Um, and we're, we're like just, you know, consistently opening those cards we want to see for disruption. Um, ideally, two different spells. Neither of them need to be insanely good, like I said before. If one was just like maybe like mediocre slow removal and the other one was just anything, like, literally, I don't even know exactly what I would want from it. But, like, something. Ugh. Like, I'm, I don't know, make an extender. Like, a Monster Reborn. Like, a simple Marine Cess Monster Reborn. That could work, too. Um, and then the last thing is, it's like an extra monster that does something, like, similar to Heat Leo. Just because, like, uh, like Salamangrates have Heat Leo. And that he's, like, such a nice piece for them. Because he helps you remove, like, so, like multiple cards on your opponent in the same turn. And this next biggest biggest weakness is removal. Salamangrates aren't even amazing at removal, in my opinion, but Heat Leo is a huge part of it, especially without Mirage Stallio. But yeah, Heat Leo just says like one back row, potentially two back row, and you make one of their monsters like so easy to run over. So it's like essentially three cards. So I would love to get some kind of utility link monster like that. And if in with those five cards, I think this deck could immediately, like right now, jump at least to the level of what Salamangrates are straight up I, like a hundred percent i think with how resource efficient they are they make one card like combos um that are extremely efficient in fact they're kind of zero card combos because you end with the exact same hand potentially even an extra card and get a link three on the field so it's it's legit i think it is like legit and so i think the future is there i think the setup is there we just like need to wait and I'm not saying it's going to happen this year. I'm not saying it's even going to happen next year. Maybe it will be later down the line. But I did want to make this video. And I wanted to share my, my thoughts with you. Because I know a lot of people like Marine Cess. I've talked to people before. I know a lot of people are fans of the artwork. Fans of the way it plays. It's so resource efficient. It's kind of controly, grindy. Kind of like Salamangrates. Just not as consistent. Because you just can't get access to your own disruptions. Consistently in the deck. So that's what I believe will make like, Marine Cess their own legit contender in the meta maybe in two years they wouldn't even be able to because of power creep or whatever but who knows right but that's going to do it for me here guys those are just my thoughts on marine Cess and their future in the competitive scene of course as always let me know your thoughts down below on this video do you think i'm wrong do you think i'm just way optimistic on this deck do you think maybe the deck needs even less than what i think it needs maybe i'm a fool and the deck's good now and nobody just knows it let me know what you think down below of course subscribe if you have not yet and I will see you in the next video. Peace.